Well, you ever been metal detecting and hit a good target and when you dig it up, it ain't nothing but a rock? But your pointer and metal detector goes off on it every time? Well, these are called hot rock and they got some kind of mineral or deposit in them that makes your metal detector go off. Well, I've been finding a few in these old ridges. I'll show you what I've been finding and then I'll show you possibilities of a story behind why these rocks may be laying here. So, let's get started. Well, like I said, I've been finding these old rocks off and on, top of these ridges, just around these old ridges and these hollers through these ridges. You can see here, and they got metal in them of some kind. Make my metal detector go crazy. Now here's one of them. Look a little, all the little shiny specks in it. Don't know what that is. Here's another one. This looks like something come out of a cave, like cave rock. I even busted this and open. And it looks like it's got iron ore deposits in it. You can see right here. Looks like iron ore on it with quartz in it. Now I don't claim to be no geologist, that's for sure. And no chemistry. At all. But this is just what I'm going to show you. Now some people say, well Donnie, in the comments, it could be a meteor come through there. Yes, it possibly could. But I kind of doubt it. But these mountains are among the oldest, if not the oldest mountains in the world, these Appalachians. So you don't know what's happened here over time. They could very well be meteorites. But I can't afford to have stuff like that tested. They ain't going to do that for free. And here's what a meteorite rocks look like. This is just some samples of pictures here. And here's more or less what they look like. Look like cinders. A lot of these meteorites. These are just pictures of old meteorite fragments they found over time. And I ain't found nothing looks like that. Now here's an old rock with gold ore in it. I'm not lucky enough to find nothing like that. Not in this area of Tennessee. Down there in the southwest, southeast part next to the Georgia, they some like that, but not here. And here's a rock with silver ore in it. I haven't found nothing like that around here either. Certain parts of the country you find this all the time. And here's some that's common around here, zinc. But a metal detector don't go off on zinc. I've tried that. This is zinc in quartz here. They mine zinc around here all the time and they have for over a hundred years. So well, that ain't nothing new. But here's something they do mine years ago. Potassium nitrate. Commonly known as saltpeter. And they mined that out of these caves all in East Tennessee. Back in the old days to make gunpowder with. Now you can see here on the map that's marked here in the red is where all most of the caves and sinkholes are throughout the U.S. And you can see here in eastern Tennessee, it's plumb full of caves. I mean plumb full of them. Right in this area right here especially. And I think they mined saltpeter back in the day. And all through Tennessee, they find evidence in other caves, I haven't around here, of where they find this saltpeter and they would leach, leach it with water and get the potassium nitrate out of it. Now around here, here's some of the caves. Some I can walk in and some I can't. Some are vertical drop-offs. You just can't get in them, just sinkhole pits like this one right here. This is a real mystery to me. I'd rig me up a GoPro 
and drop this camera down in them. And I've lost it once, but I recovered it in the cave. And here's one that is really a mystery to me. Best I can measure it, it's about 70 foot deep, straight down. It's just vertical. This is what I, what I could film, what it looks like inside. And here's some of the pictures of it. If you've seen the videos on my channel. This is looking straight up when the camera fell back on its back at the bottom. That's a big drop. There ain't no climbing up and down that except by a rope. Now here's some of the pictures I have managed to capture. Just a few I'll show you. Got some nice formations in there. Hidden from the world. Now here's some ore deposits in there you can see in the walls. Some nice pictures in that old cave. Here's some ore deposits. You can see it looks like that uh, potassium nitrate there and quartz. Don't tell them what kind of deposits in them walls. Now here's the strangest picture of them all in this cave. This one that I can't get in. Now what's that look like to you? That looks like an Indian head to me. That is a mystery. Strange, unknown. And on the cave that I can get in, I find a lot of old dates. Here's an old date of one I found. Now I'll leave a link to these videos, to these caves. If you haven't seen them, you're a new subscriber or a new viewer and you want to see them. And a big mystery around here, about eight miles from here, is North, or uh, Douglas Dam, I'm sorry. And there was a big Indian village here. And in 1540, Hernando de Soto comes exploring down the river from across the Smokies, exploring this country. He stayed here about a month exploring the area with the Indian. He didn't find nothing he wanted like gold, so he went on down the river. But a big surprise to me is the history of this area, just off from that same spot there, that Indian village, which is under the lake now, is a Samuel McSpadden's home. Here's his home. Right there on the side, it's a lake now. It used to be the river. This is where he lived and died at. And the strange history about this, here's the history of it. So he was an old Revolutionary War soldier. A lot of them come in here from the Revolutionary War. Well, anyway, Samuel McFadden was a gunpowder maker. And he built this house in 1804 and died here in 1844. He made a gunpowder from a powder mill a quarter of a mile here, which was on the river at one time. And he loaded flat boats and took the gunpowder down to New Orleans for Andrew Jackson fighting that battle. And I would say he mined in these caves around here, all around, what he could find, saltpeter, to make gunpowder with. And he made it in little crude powder mills like this along the river. Probably took him a lot to dig and accumulate to make that much gunpowder. Well, he made it. And I'd say Andrew Jackson put an order in for it. Now, I don't know the history if they got it down there in time or how long it took them to get there. I can't really find no written history of it. But this is where it went to, New Orleans, to help Andrew Jackson supply his men with gunpowder for fighting this battle. And they loaded it on these boats and barges, a couple of them, what it said, that I could find out, and they took them down the French Broad River till it met the Tennessee River, the Little Tennessee, and then it met the Big Tennessee, and then it went on down till they met the Mississippi, and then it went on down to New Orleans. Now that had to be one heck of a trip. Now here's the map of the major river system in the U.S. 
the majors. And it's around here where he made us around Dandridge, Tennessee, and he took it to New Orleans. Here's the route he took right here. That route has to be close to a thousand miles. And that had to be one heck of a rough trip, just getting to the Mississippi. Because these, these ain't just easy little troll down the river. These rivers were treasures back in their day. A lot of shows, a lot of bad places. So they had a rough time. It's all mostly lakes now, chained through dams all down this Tennessee Valley. But this is what they look like. But these were just sheer cliffs and show turning in curves, so it had to be real treacherous back in them day. Now, that's just a story I could tell you. There's no written story on a lot of this stuff. It just died off as, as time went on. I've looked and looked. You can't even find it in the archives of the county museums or nothing. It's just hard to find this history. And there's so much time passed through these hills and mountains, hundreds of years. And the Native Americans, they had it for thousands and thousands of years. So much time and history still laying in these mountains. I thought I'd share that with you. And I hope you enjoyed these little stories. And I love to find this history. You don't know what's laying in the next hole. So I'll, I'll share these links with you if you're interested in looking at some of them on the caves and the history. I want to thank you for watching. God bless, and I'll see you next time.